So, osmosis is the diffusion of water through a semi-permeable membrane. And this is something that a lot of teachers will spend a little bit of time on, but then they'll hammer you with it on a test. Because it's really kind of unusual when you first approach it, a lot of kids don't really get what it means. But to the teachers, it's pretty obvious. So let me see if we can help you figure this out. So, what this is all about is a special case of diffusion. You know, diffusion is, but why is it specifically water? And that's because water has the ability to go through a number of different membranes. This black line here that I drew in, I'm using to represent some kind of membrane. Well, it's a cell membrane, a special kind of uh, plastic called dialysis tubing, whatever. You'll notice that there's small holes in it. I've used red to represent sodium ions. They're too large to fit through these holes. I've used blue to represent water. It's easily small enough to fit through. So what happens is that, like all other molecules, water does diffusion. And you know diffusion is the movement from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. So what we see here is that the water starts to diffuse from where there's 90% water to where there's 70% water. Why? Because that's what molecules do. So the water tends to go like this. Now does all of the water go? No. If I look at just this one area here, if this is 90%, then let's suppose I'll make up a number of 90 molecules of water going that way. At the exact same time, 70 of the water molecules over here are going back. 90 go this way, 70 go that way. There's a net difference of we're gaining 20 on this side. Now the sodium, it tries to diffuse, but like my friend Tuton Tony, he can't fit through the opening of the doorway. So he gets, he bounces off and stays over here. This sodium tries to move, but it bounces off because it can't fit through. And that means that ultimately we see the water moving from this side to that side while the sodium stays. And it, this will continue going until the water has wound up diluting out the sodium on this side, equilibrating its concentrations. That's osmosis. Now, as I said, teachers love to ask a bunch of questions about this. So I'm going to give you the three basic questions that they'll generally ask about osmosis. Now to do this, I'm going to be introducing some vocabulary, this stuff about tonic. Now tonic is a root word that means pull, I think, in Latin. I'm not sure. It's all Greek to me. But what I'm going to do is I've drawn here three different circumstances. This little black circle here that's in my beaker of water, let's say that's a red blood cell. right? All of these red blood cells have 80% water, 20% other stuff. I don't care what it is, it's just not water. So they're all the same. However, I've plunked them into three different kinds of solutions. This is pure water. As you can see, it's 100% water, zero stuff. This is 80% water, 20% stuff. This is 60% water, 40% stuff. Let's take a look at this one right here. Every second, some of the water molecules move out, but some of the water molecules move in. What's the net change? Well, 80 move in as 80 move out, so there's no change. The salt and other proteins and other things that cannot pass the membrane, they stay, so we're only looking at the water because this is osmosis. Because we see no change, because both sides have the same amount of pull, tonic ability, we call them isotonic. Isotonic means it has the same concentration of water and solutes. Let me use the red pen to represent solutes. All right. What about this situation? Well, 80% inside, 100% outside. 80 move out, 100 move in. What's going to be the overall change? Water is going to continue moving in and in and in. This is going to make this cell start to go swell up. And a red blood cell doesn't have the ability to do anything else like start shoving some of the salt out, so it's going to pop. Because this outside water uh, solution doesn't have any ability to pull water into it. In fact, it's pushing water out. It's called hypotonic because it has lower than the normal amount of pull compared to the cell. It's always in comparison. It's kind of like saying taller. 
Somebody can be taller or shorter than someone else. You can never just say, that person is taller. So hypotonic says, means it has less concentration of solute more water. Okay? If we take a look at this one, this is 80% water on the inside, 60% water on the outside because there's a ton of other stuff, say salt or whatever. So we have our water move out, 80 move out, 60 move in. We have a net movement out of the cell. So in this case, instead of popping, sometimes that's called lysing, here it starts to shrivel. If it's a plant cell, they don't say plant, that plant shriveled. They say that plant wilted. And if it's a red blood cell, another word that you'll see besides shrivel is crenate. I don't know why people keep coming up with these words just to confuse you guys. So this one, the solution outside the cell has a greater pull, an excessive pull, and it pulls all the water out. Tonic means pull. What is excessive? What's a root word that means excessive? Well, you may have known that hypo meant below, as in hypothermia. What means excessive? Hyper, like your brother. He is hyperactive, so this has a hyper excessive pull. So a hypertonic solution has more solute, less water. So that's how you do osmosis. Right? So in an isotonic solution, a cell will just stay the same. It will be in equilibrium. A cell in a hypotonic solution will swell up, and if it's a plant cell, its wall will keep it from bursting. But animal cells will typically pop, especially red blood cells. In a hypertonic solution, a cell will shrivel or wilt.